What happens when you glitch into the void in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl? Every Pokemon game has its fair share of glitches. Emerald has the cloning glitch, Red and Blue have, well, a lot. But when Pokemon Diamond and Pearl came out over 10 years ago, they had something very different. Diamond and Pearl have something called the Void Glitch, which allows you to access the area of total darkness surrounding maps. In the earliest Japanese release of Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, people discover that if you use Surf on the door in the room for Aaron of the Elite Four, you'll actually go right through the door and enter the black area called the Void. How somebody discovered this, I honestly have no idea. Fun fact, this is actually one of the few Pokemon game glitches acknowledged by Nintendo, and was patched out in later Japanese and all international releases of the game. But if you did happen to do this glitch and got stuck in the void, Nintendo actually had you covered. They offered a service where you could send in your glitched copy of Diamond and Pearl and they would actually get your character out of the void. They started this back in 2006 and interestingly enough, they supported it all the way up to February 2018. That's quality service there. But anyway, this glitch was huge for a few reasons. First off, you're surfing through a door. But second, once you got into the void, you'd actually be able to explore it. Exploring the void can be quite dangerous. If you save in here, you can easily get stuck and ruin your save file, and I've also heard stories of people entering the void and getting their game corrupted. However, if you enter the void with a plan, you could actually find some very cool areas. Like I mentioned before, when Diamond and Pearl came out for the rest of the world, the surfing glitch was patched. Does this mean it's the end of the void? No way! Diamond and Pearl have another huge glitch called tweaking. Basically, if you ride your bike quickly in specific spots, you can make the game load maps incorrectly and get some crazy results. The reason this works is because all maps in Diamond and Pearl are broken up into chunks of 32 by 32 tiles. The game can only load four chunks at a time. Each chunk has an area called a load line, which basically tells the game what part of the map to load and what part of the map to unload when you cross over it. You might not realize it, but whenever you're walking through the Sinnoh region, you're crossing over plenty of these load lines which allow the game to appear seamlessly. By riding your bike quickly through these load lines, the game can get confused and incorrectly load the chunks, which can cause the game to do a lot of weird things. For example, your game can freeze and you'll have to reset it, it can load a black void, or sometimes it can even do something like this. Loading up the wrong area and essentially letting you walk around in a visible void. The easiest and probably the most commonly used tweak is what's called the Slow Bike Tweak in Jubilife City. To do this tweak, you're obviously going to need the bike. In Jubilife City, you're going to want to go to this exact spot right here. Make sure you're using the slower of the two bike settings and then simply go to the right. One, two, three, four, five. Go down one step, up one step, and then go left. One, two, three. 3, 4, 5. This is what it'll look like if you do it correctly. If you do this right and you go to the northwest part of Jubilife City, you'll see the game got confused and instead of rendering the rest of Jubilife City, it actually put part of Route 203 there instead. Now this is actually really cool to walk around in. Because the game loaded incorrectly, you could walk through the signs, you could run in the grass all day and you'll never find the wild Pokemon, and you could even do a cool little trick by surfing on the water, opening up your menu and clicking any icon that changes the screen, then closing it out. The graphics will be refreshed, but you'll still be surfing on land. Be careful if you do this though, because if you start messing around to refresh the graphics, you could find yourself in the middle of a bunch of trees and stuck unless you have a Pokemon with Fly or Teleport. Now this is cool and all, but what does it have to do with the Void? Well, by doing this slow bike tweak in Jubilife City, you can actually access the Void here. After successfully doing this tweak, if you go to this specific spot on the screen, refresh the graphics, you'll find yourself in the middle of the Poketch building. Take a step down and you'll enter the building, and voila! Look at yourself, you're inside of the void. This is where the fun begins. Like I mentioned before, if you're in the void and you know where you're going, you could get a lot of cool stuff to happen. Using this void glitch and tweaking, you could actually get Darkrai, Shaman, and the god of all Pokemon, Arceus, in Diamond and Pearl without hacking. Many years ago, when these glitches were first being discovered, it would take you over an hour to be able to get Darkrai and Shaman in the void, and Arceus 
Atreus? Forget that, that was not gonna happen. But over the years, due to hard work and research by people like Retire, we can now get Darkrai and Shaman in the Void in about 5 minutes each, and Arceus is now obtainable as well. Don't believe me? Let me show you how it's done. To do this, you'll need a copy of Pokemon Diamond or Pearl. Platinum will not work with this. You'll also need to have done the things on the screen, pause if you need to. First, we're going to start off by doing the slow bike tweak in Jubilife City. We're going to do this so we could enter the void. And if you're going to follow along and try to do this with me, I definitely recommend watching through the full video first so you know everything that you have to do. And also, take note that doing this is very dangerous even if you do it correctly. I'd recommend if you're going to do this, do this on a save file that you don't care about losing because there's a lot that can go wrong here. Now, once you're in the void, open up the step counter on the Poketch. You're going to want to track every single movement that we make in the void to make sure you're doing it correctly. Now, the first thing that we're going to be doing is setting up what's called a wrong warp. Basically, this is just going to save us a lot of time in the future. Now, go down one step south. Next, go 17 steps west. Then, go 14 steps north. Now you're going to run 415 steps to the west, and I sound like a GPS saying all these. Once you get about 100 steps in, and you see the mystery zone header in the corner of the screen, you can now use your bike, which I recommend doing because it's a lot faster than just running. After you've done the 415 steps, you have to save your game. Then go ahead and reset it. After the reset, you're going to want to run 380 steps east. I know this sounds redundant because we just ran west, so why are we running back in the opposite direction? But by doing all this, we're messing around with the game's RAM, so it actually puts us in a different location. Now, open up your bag, go use the Explorer Kit item, and then once you see the text box, just press B. And now we're going 480 steps north. And remember, be very careful with the amount of steps that you take. You don't want to go over any of the amounts. Once you start getting close to the number, slow down so you don't go over it. Next, 260 steps east. And if you did everything right, you'll be hearing the cheery Pokemon Center music. So now, save your game and reset! Now we're gonna go 214 steps west. After that, go 479 steps south. Once you're done with all those steps, you're gonna do something different. Do a graphic reload by opening up anything in the menu that takes up the whole screen, like the bag or the Pokemon menus. And now the void is going to look like a Pokemon Center, which is a lot better in my opinion. Anyway, from here, go south as fast as you can until you hit the wall. Then refresh the graphics again. Now go two steps south and three steps west. Then talk to the lady directly below you and save the game. Once you save the game, you can go ahead and reset it, and also look at this cool little thing. You're walking through a wall over here. It looks so strange. But now, congratulations, we completed the wrong warp setup. From here, we could either go get Darkrai or Shaman, and it's only going to take about three minutes after this. For me, I like Darkrai better, so we're going after Darkrai. Now, once you reload the game, the Pokemon Center is going to be gone, but don't worry, we're going to be at something a lot better soon. First, go 36 steps east. Then, go 260 steps south. After that, go 70 steps to the west. Next, go 60 steps south again. Then, we're going 27 steps to the west. Next, we're going 32 steps east. Finally, we're going 32 steps north. Once you get to the end of these steps, save your game and reset. Now, once we reset the game, this last part is going to be very interesting. Your step counter is not going to work here anymore, so you're going to have to be very careful with counting the steps. First, go one step to the north. Then, go two steps east. 
Then you want to run north until you hear a thud noise. After you get to that point, go five steps south. From there, we want to go to the Poketch and switch to the Berry Map or the Wandering Pokemon Tracker. Either work fine. Now you're just going to run east until your marker is above the Iron Island icon. Once your marker is above Iron Island, keep walking one step east at a time. You want to keep doing this until your marker moves over one more column. Once you know that you're in the right spot, walk 11 steps to the east, save, and reset. And my friends, let's take a look and see where we are. The game says New Moon Island, and if you know anything about New Moon Island, that is the place where you could catch the one and only legendary Pokemon, Darkrai. Oh my gosh, this feels so satisfying after all of these years finally getting to encounter a Darkrai in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. Fun fact, this event was never released for Diamond and Pearl. Platinum, they did eventually release it, but Diamond and Pearl, for some odd reason, they never gave out the item to allow you to access New Moon Island. So, with this glitch, this is the only way you could get Darkrai semi-legitimately in Diamond and Pearl. Interestingly enough, I heard that you can actually transfer this Darkrai over to the newer Pokemon games, but only if you level it up to at least level 50 before transferring it, and also make it forget the move Pursuit. Transferring works with Pokemon Diamond, although I heard people have some trouble transferring Darkrai from Pokemon Pearl. And my friends, you now know all about the Void Glitch in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, and what happens when you go inside of it. I want to give a huge shout out to the YouTuber Retire because they made a lot of this information publicly known and also made the steps for how to get Darkrai. If you want to know how to get Shaman or Arceus through the tweaking glitch as well, I'll be linking Retire's guides for those in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.